Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome inside the MCLA TV studio. My name is Jeff Polari, Assistant Athletic Director, here with MCLA men's soccer coach Adam Hildebrand on the eve of the MASCAC playoffs. Coach, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Talk a little bit about weekend results Saturday down at Framingham. Uh, another tough uh, outcome for MCLA, 2-1 to one overtime. Just talk a little bit about uh, that result down yeah, there. Yeah, it was pretty gut-wrenching how it ended, uh, but we did have the silver lining knowing that we would be seated pretty high in the playoffs. Um, you know, I think part of the result going up one nothing early and handling momentum once you get a lead and, and uh, maybe sitting back a little too much once you have a goal lead. And uh, credit to Framingham, they have a great player in Corey Cadero who scored two fantastic goals with his head. And, uh, you know, if we were to see them again in the future, that's something we have to look at. Yeah. Talk just a little bit about the overall body of work, the overall season. Five, nine, and two overall, <laughs> three and four in the conference. Uh, did earn a three seed through a little bit of chance with, uh, sure. you know, some things that kind of fell in our way. But just talk a little bit about the uh, quick snapshot of the season. I think, uh, you know, overall it's been a very good season. We were pretty happy with the results. You know, it's been like a Richter scale up and down, uh, you know, out of conference. Um, we do feel like our out of conference schedule helped mentally prepare us for the league. Uh, playing Montclair and Albertus Magnus and Elms, uh, mm -hmm. quality opponents that help us, you know, so we got something out of every match we played out of league and I think that's helped us with our mentality going into the playoffs. Early on in the season, I think the team struggled scoring goals. Sure. Um, kind of come on of late, um, you know, 23 goals on the season, Anthony Basile leading the team with nine goals. But you've also sh uh, showed some versatility with some other players stepping forward. On the defensive side of things, you guys have allowed 34 goals on the season. So just talk a little bit about how the team has come forward offensively and uh, also on the defensive side. You know, offensively, we do have some dynamic players outside of Anthony, which allows him to do his job, and Dylan Pereira and Eddie Boateng. And then you have some supporting cast members like Chris Shea and Tyler Volna that can move the ball around. And uh, those players moving the ball around create opportunities for Anthony. And, uh, you know, when Dylan Pereira scores, that means someone's got to watch for Dylan a little bit and opens Anthony up. Um, so, you know, those players ones to watch out for. Defensively, you know, we're still a work in progress. We have a starting sophomore goalkeeper uh, who's learning the job while he's on the job. Mm -hmm. And uh, the back line has been sort of, you know, we're growing into a team in the back line, the back four. Uh, Ryan Baker moving back into the back line has helped solidify things. Uh, you know, he uh, had a great shutout against Albertus Magnus the other day, helping out Cameron Anderson in goal, just blocking shots and keeping things organized and being a leader back there. So it's a work in progress. Uh, it's, we don't like how many goals we've been scored against us, but we, we're mm -hmm. working on it and uh, pretty confident moving forward with that group. Great. So let's take a look ahead. Also a look back as well, back on October 10th down to Worcester mm. State. Um, tough, uh, tough result, had an early 2 nothing lead. Lancers come back, they're in a 3-2 win. Um, you know, fast forward a few weeks, you know, you're now the three seed, you got Worcester coming back to North Adams uh, sure. tomorrow, 1.30 uh, start. Just talk a little bit about that game back on October 10th, what you learned from that game and what you think your team needs to do differently to have a different outcome tomorrow. Yeah, back on October 10th, uh, Brian Brazil from Worcester scored a game winning goal. And Brian is tricky, he's speedy, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, he takes a lot of risks, risks at uh, in the right moment. And I think part of you know, tomorrow will be managing Brian Brazil. Mm -hmm. Don't give him space, and if somebody's on him, make sure we have cover uh, on that defender. Um, you know, it's, he potentially is going to beat his guy in the dribble, so we need another guy to step up right away when that does happen. So we want to limit counterattacks to Brian Brazil, and I think we need to manage set pieces a little bit, how we defend them. Mm -hmm. uh, Worcester is very dangerous in the air. They have a great long throw in, great uh, set piece deliveries from other players. And, uh, you know, Jay, Jay Willis does a great job keeping that side organized, and uh, they play good ball, and, you know, we're excited to play them tomorrow. Right. So that's the Worcester State side. What does MCLA need to do? What do we need to do on offense uh, moving forward to come out on top? I think that our goal is to really, you know, use the whole field. You know, MCLA is unique with Shoecraft Field, and uh, not, no one else in the MASCAC has a setting like ours. So we're going to take advantage of the full width and the length and uh, spread the ball around and hopefully stretch their back line apart mm -hmm. so we could find a Dylan Pereira or Anthony Basile in a seam to put a ball away. And uh, I think we gotta, you know, we're gonna <clears throat> manage how our shape on the attack. Mm -hmm. So a good attacking shape will be a good defensive shape, which would limit 
their counterattacking opportunities in theory. Aside from some of the obvious, you mentioned Brian Basile from, uh, I'm sorry, Brian Brazil from Worcester State. Sure. You mentioned some of your guys. Give me somebody kind of off the radar a little bit that should have a big impact in this game one way or the other. Our, uh, you know, our central midfield is kind of new. It's Chris Shea and Khalil Correa. Khalil, a Hoosick Valley grad from Adams, and uh, he's come on strong late as a freshman. And Chris Shea from Kipsey, New York, Arlington High School uh, as a sophomore. And both of them are doing a great job sitting in the middle. Uh, winning balls, spreading the ball around. They're kind of like Laurel and Hardy. Khalil's mm -hmm. the uh, strong, muscular type, and uh, Shea is sort of like the active, wispy guy that uh, possesses the ball real well. Great. Well, Coach, I wish you the best of luck tomorrow. 1.30, Shoecraft Field, third seed at MCLA Trailblazers will host the Worcester State Lancers. You can follow along. Uh, webcast tomorrow is available at athletics.mcla.edu. Fans, stay in touch with everything MCLA, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you and have a great day.